But join us today, those, those of you who live in the sanctuary, those who are yet with us here on today. We thank God for this time. It's prayer time, our time where we go and lift up those on our prayer list, those who are yet going through in this season. Amen. There are many names on our prayer list, many people who are yet going through. Amen. But we know a God who can Amen. hear us and not turn us away. David said, I will look to the hills when coming. David said, I ain't looking down. <laughs> Thomas, I want to pray for Kadisha, Brian, King, Queen Walker. 
Everybody should have moved and then we go. Amen. We move forward. But we'll lift up amen on today. Let's pray. Let's stand on our feet as we pray. Those who ain't those who can't amen, please be seated. Amen. Father God, we thank you, oh God, for right now. We thank you for this season that we're in, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for this pandemic season, God, because it brings us closer to you. God, you're trying to get our attention. You're the only God that stepped out into nothing and spoke to me. You're the same God that shut everything down in the world and said, I Healing in this land. God heal the land. Heal the land. You you told the Israelites, if my people 
deeds, oh God. Be with our first responders, oh God. Be with nurses, oh God, and, and doctors, oh God, who have to tend to people who are yet dealing with this. For God returns the economy, oh God. If it be not divine will. But God, we trust you. Because you're too sovereign, you're too smart to be trusted. You know, God, how to fix this. So in the name of Jesus, we only ask that you will. Let your will be done on earth as it is.
of the Lord. He said, Behold, to obey. Everybody say obey. Obey. Is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of the rams. Uh-huh. In John 14 and 23, Jesus answered and said unto them, said to the people, to the side, that any man love me, watch this, he will what? First, keep my words. Right. That means obey. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him and, and make an abode with him. Luke 6 and 46, they reverse it. Some members of the church said, And why do ye call me Lord, Lord? And do not the things that I say. Obedience. The story is told of a young lady who actually uh, says that this young lady, as the offering tray was being passed in church on a particular Sunday, the young lady took the tray, the offering tray, and she put it on the floor. Probably the people around her probably began to look and said, What is she doing? And, 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 and the story goes on and says, she stood on the offering plate. The usher said, honey, why are you doing that? And she said, because they taught me in Sunday school, everybody say Sunday school, Sunday school. that my whole body was to be offered to the Savior. Wow. Out of the mouth of babes. The little girl got the point that she was the one who belonged in the tray. Amen. And that God does not want just our donation. The word that the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof. They that dwell. I want to ask you, man, what are you offering God? Amen. What is your sacrifice unto the Lord? What is your, not just your mere presence, or he might be happy that I'm here, because I'm all that in the bag of chill. No, what are you offering sincerely from your heart to the Lord, even on today? Elijah learned in this particular text that he had to be able to what? To basically be open vessel, to be used by God. Elijah learned the first eight verses that God can use, take a, a seem like a dead up situation, a dried up brook, and turn it into what? A vessel to provide for his people. Amen. Amen. See, God made a man like Elijah to speak to Ahab and Jezebel. Y'all remember Jezebel? We talked a little bit about Jezebel even on last week on how Jezebel, how evil she was. And the word says in the preceding chapter, in, 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 in the first week, that Ahab did evil Amen. in the presence of the Lord. He turned from what he knew what was right. I ask you even on today. Well, are you thinking, are you making sure your life is, is being light, is being loved, is being given back to the kingdom? Are you doing everything out of obedience what God has asked you to do? Quick question on today. Sacrificial giving can lead to unexpected blessings. Elijah walks into the court of King, King Ahab and Jezebel and declares it. Rain will not come down. And he leaves the courtroom in verses, the first couple of verses of first Kings chapter number 17. Then he actually leaves the court, goes and hides by the brook. The brook dries up. Amen. The ravens stop feeding him. But God tells him in verse number 9 and 10, go and go and go to Zarephath. There'll be a lady there who will feed you and help you in this particular case. He goes to Zarephath. Me sees a woman at the gate collecting sticks. Yeah. A widow woman, a poor woman. Didn't have much. Amen. The verses tell us, he, he tells her, he, he asks her, what are you doing? Can you bring me a drink of water? And he says, why are you at it? Fix me a piece of bread, a piece of bread, a morsel of bread. Even the lady lays out the story. I don't have it. I don't have it to give unto you. And she said, Lord, as the Lord lived in verse number 12, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and barrel. And a little oil and a cruise. And, and behold, I am gathering two sticks to make her look far, that I may go and dress it for me and my son. She didn't even have even hope in this situation. So even if you don't remember that same draft that he proclaimed earlier in, 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 in the court of Ahab and Jezebel, it's the same draft and family that's going on in the land with this lady. So all we got is a little meal. Enough to eat for me and my son. I'm going to cook it so we can go die. Yeah. Mm. What do you do when it seems like there's no hope in your life? Well, what do you do? I want to encourage you on today. I want you to make sure, even on virtual, you're being a what? Obedient unto God. Why? Because there's purpose in empty vessels. <laughs> there's a meaning. There's something that God wants. Could it be prayer to nature? God was using this situation to give this woman's attention. Not just this woman's attention. Elijah's attention. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Remember in the first story that 
and he showed Elijah that even in a dried up brook, I can still be God. Yeah. He's speaking to Elijah now that there's purpose in this empty vessel. He's telling us, listen, I can even move in a dried up vessel when there's no food. After the woman tells the story, Elijah tells her, go and grab something and, and, and prepare it for us to eat. Matthew 16 and 24. Jesus said to the disciples, if any man, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. I say deny himself. Deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. That means you have to forget your way of living, your way of thinking. The way you were going, you have to change your stinking thinking. Amen. Jesus said, you want to follow me? Put out everything else. Forget everything else. Follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. See, this lady was poor, not just poor in spirit. She was poor because she was a widow, didn't even have a husband. All she had was her and her son. And what she was thinking was the last couple days of life. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits of your produce, that your bonds may be filled with plenty, and your vats may be what? Bursting with what? With wine. She had no, he didn't have any fruit, fuel to even, even make, make this more so what she was going to be cooking. But she said, he tells her, listen, cook what you're going to do, what you're going to do with you and your, 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 your son. But first, if I say first, first. see, this is, the, this is the principle, the concept, the biblical principle of first fruits. Yeah, yeah. God tells us first is why they always took, what, a lamb, an unspotted lamb, a lamb that had not been affected by the world. First fruits. Amen. Luke 6 and 38 tells us that if we give, we'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run it over, he and put it into your lap. For with the measure you see, it will be measured even back to you. He said, first, I like to tell first before you do anything, fix me something. That's why we ought to always honor God with our life. We ought to always honor God what, with our first fruit. Pastor, well, what do you mean by first fruit? I mean like on your job. Like when you, when you get a job, well, everybody got a job, maybe you get a check. Amen. So when they give you money on your job, they get you. Now, we talk about money. No, I'm not talking about money. For me. It's for the church. for you. It's for you. Because the old way of teaching, uh, they, they told us that, that you are cursed with a curse. Well, because the picture of people say, well, Pastor, that's in the Old Testament. You're right. Jesus says in the New, in the New Testament, technically, it all belongs to God. Amen. So you want God to have first fruits? I want to have it all. Amen. I'll hear everybody saying that. Great. Great. First fruits. <laughs> first fruits. First fruits. The first fruits of your yeast, of your heart. And, well, Pastor, if I get a rain, and I go, well, <laughs> you want to be cursed? On the whole, a blessed part. Amen. Which one do you want? It's an easy choice. Yeah, yes. he, she, he says to her, I know, God knows our situation. He knows how much money we make. He, he, he looks at, you know what? God don't need your two dollars. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know why? You know what? God, God hangs out on streets that are made with gold. Amen. We, we, we put gold on our teeth and on our ears. Oh, 
hopeless situation. Let me tell you, even in a pandemic, there's purpose in a pandemic. There's purpose in what God can yet do. Even though you're thinking, I'm going to get laid off my job, I'm running out of money. God can yet still move just in the nick of time. God will move. Yes. Because there's purpose in an empty vessel. Second point, there's power in empty vessels. Verse 15, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she said, and she and he and her house did eat many days. You remember that this is the same woman that said, I'm going to cook this last meal. But the power in empty vessels now make sure they had what? Enough to eat, Corey. For what? How many days? Two days. Three days. Three days. I can hear you out there rushing in three days. The word says many days. What started out being empty, now they mean they're going to have groceries to some weather in the house for many days to come. Amen. You see how God has power? Yes. Mm, power. Power in empty. That's a, and purpose in empty. And it all started with her having just a little bit of oil yep. and a little bit of meal. But because she obeyed God, she realized that sometimes that sacrificial giving all the time can lead to unexpected blessings. Yeah. You know, what if she had been stubborn and said, you know what, I'm not giving this man, I don't know this man, this man homeless, he dirty, he's dirty. You know how sometimes y'all look at people, everybody looks for You know how sometimes y'all look at people, homeless people on the street, y'all see them dirty and filthy, you don't give them a drink of water, you don't look at them, you don't do that. You know, y'all pull to the light, y'all look to the left, to the right. Y'all say, yeah, I hope the man don't come over here, hope she don't come over here. Oh, they kind of dirty, look at the dirt on their face, look at the dirty feet, they don't have no shoes on. Oh my God, look at the toenail. Oh, we don't get a nail done, her hair's all man up. The word says be careful That's right. yep. how you treat strangers. Right. Isn't it right? That's right. That's right. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 says, the point is this, Jesus said, whoever sows sparingly will also what? Reap sparingly. But whoever sows bountifully what? Will also reap bountifully. You know, you probably say, Pastor, why is Pastor talking about giving? We're in a pandemic. You know, you know, we can't even give it no pandemic. We got no. I ain't asking. I'm just, I'm just teaching what I'm teaching about. I'm just going right through. I didn't put this in here. This guy put it in a long time. I think Corey put this in here. Amen. No, Corey put it in Amen. God put that in there. Amen. He put it. I didn't put verse 9. I didn't put verse 10 through 20 through 15 in there. I said, Brother, God did. Amen. It just don't happen to hit on the day. But he said it. Amen. If I say first fruits. First fruits. He asked the lady, present to me a cake. First a flower on your ground, uh, and then you, that you grind up. And then fix you in the poison. And guess what? You will be. He never even told her what she was going to get. So a lot of times in life, we have to tell people what we're going to get. Well, if I do this, this is what we're going to get. Well, what, what am I going to get out of it if I do this? <laughs> what, my part, what, my part, what, what my return on this? And what am I going to get? What am I going to get out of it? He never said, if you give me $9.99, For the worst. What seems like, but even in this story, 
And verse number 20. <clears throat> Things happen and change in this woman's life. And I'm on this last point. And I want to talk to you about the provision of empty vessels. How can there be provision? God has already blessed her life. Earlier, he fed her. Now they're eating for many days. Not so long after that. You know, your life, you can go from the highest high to the lowest low in one half step. And you wonder, Lord, I thought you loved me. Lord, I thought you cared for me. Life happens, Coy. Things will be all hunky-dory. Flowers will spring up. And, and my daddy, I always, my dad told me when I was growing up, he says, green grass dies in the fall. Think about it. Green grass dies in the fall. It cycles back. It's the cycle of life. The word tells us that it rains on what? The just? And who else? The unjust. In verse number 20, this lady has a life experience. And he cried out to the Lord. I mean, I mean actually, it starts up a little further, further than that. I'm going to get my glasses over so I can make sure I can read it, read it just right. I mean, actually, early on in verse number 19, I believe it's off in 18, 19. Let me get over here, too, because I want to make sure. Uh, 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 let me see, where, where am I? Where am I over here? Get over here, verse number 18, 19. Ah, verse number 18, 17, verse number 17. It says, and it came to pass after these things. After they've been eating for many days, watch this, that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore, there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elisha, what have I to do with thee? O thou man of God. Art thou come and done to me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, verse number 19, give me thy son. And he took him up of her, out of her bosom and carried him up into the loft, the upper room, some verses says, where he abode and laid, but laid on him, laid him upon his own bed. Wow. Sometimes life will take a turn. Seem like it, it, it's for destruction. But guess what? Jesus tells us that Saul's sin is not unto death. Amen. Yeah. Even in this instance, she comes to Elijah, the same person, watch this, that provided food for her and her son. For how many days? Two days. Amen. For three days. Amen. Okay, four days. Amen. The word says many days. Yeah. Sometimes the same people you help will turn around and what? Bite you, won't they? She forgot that the same man that fed her and her son these many days, she begins to say, what have I to do? What have I done? See, sometimes in life, life will happen to you. It will. You may have not done anything wrong. Some things are done, do you know why? For God's glory. So that God can give it. That's why I don't curse every situation you go through. Because it could be a learning experience. A lot of experiences I'm going through, like, I, I look at some of them, some of them, some of them bad choices. I made some bad choices, okay? Some of them God allowed me to go through. To what? To bring me closer to Him. Wow. To humble me. To get my, to let me know, Patterson, I can provide. I can, I can provide the vision. In empty vessels. I tell you some kind of a story. I have a little RX7. I live in Houston, uh, Texas. I was riding around. Amen. I knew it was time to get rid of the car because everywhere I go, amen, I had a little hole in my radiator. Don't be laughing. Don't y'all laugh at me. Amen. Yeah, Pastor Pastor had a red, had a whole nice black, nice black RX7 oh, before I met my wife, y'all. Amen. I had a see what we put over there. Amen. I, I wasn't married. Amen. I was a law school down there, riding around on the little RX7, a little two seater sports car. I thought I was cool. Amen. I had a hole in the radiator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everywhere I went, come on, Houston, Texas was hot and humid. Everywhere I time I stopped, I had to let the car cool down. Amen. Had a jug of water in the back. Amen. Don't, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Had a jug of water. I go and I bring it up to the front and I pour it off in it and then I take it off and go to the next spot. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and you tell me, ain't no purpose in crack, broken, empty vessels. Hallelujah. I know the Lord will make a way. See, sometimes God don't give you money. Sometimes God will give you what? An idea. Is it that? Before I moved the next time, I had to pour water what, into the radiator. Yeah, but God 
is what I graduate, I move, and may God bless my life. Yeah. But even in this instance, this woman says, what am I to do to you with you? Why would you bring me through this? Why would you do this to me? I can hear Elijah say, like Jesus said, where is your faith? Amen. Where is your faith? If I did it before, I can do what? I can do it again. If I healed you before, I can, if I can deliver you before, if I provide for you before, if I paid your bill before, I can do it again. Amen. He says, give me the boy. Elisha takes the boy up to the upper room. Prays for the boy. Three times. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He prays for this child after he had died. Paul expressed the same belief in Jesus Christ. Paul expressed it this way. He said, I'm crucified, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave me for himself. Amen. What a picture. Of Elijah raising up the because the story goes on that Elijah comes down the steps from the upper room with the boy in his hands. He says, "See your son, which was dead, uh -huh. now lives." Yo, 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 there's purpose. There's purpose.
That's why the word says he got up with what? With all power in his hands. The purpose of empty vessels. The power of empty vessels. The provision of empty vessels. Wow. The cracker world was empty and dried up. The brook, first of all, the brook dried up. God was teaching Elijah that sometimes in life, things will dry up. Then he shows Elijah that sometimes you're going to run out of something. Food needs going to dry up. And then finally he teaches Elijah. God is teaching Elijah like he's teaching us. That sometimes in life, things are going to dry up. But to know that there is provision, it seems like empty vessels. Sacrificial giving can lead to unexpected blessing. You know what? It all began with the woman. If she had never met the need for the prophet, Amen. she never would have got blessed. I believe it. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap on today. Amen. 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 We pray on today. Psalm is coming. Sing us. Music ministry is coming. Father God, we thank you, God, for those who are here today. We pray, oh God, that some word may be helped and touch some hearts today, oh God. That people may understand, oh God, that sacrificial giving leads to unexpected blessings. Your word says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shake it together, run it over. All in them that shall men give into your will. Oh my, because you gave to the Father. God, we know that this woman was not given to God. She was given to God's man, the prophet who God sent and said, this woman will take it. And sometimes, God, we know it like you'll speak to our heart and say, give. Help us to be obedient, oh God. Maybe one of them, God, needs to know you're a part of their sins, God. We present them to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen. I need personal name. You got a prayer request. You got an issue you want to pray about. We invite you to tweet it in. We invite you to, 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 to type it in, text it in, send it to us. Can lead to unexpected blessings. No evidence, nobody put your blessing out. Do what God asks you to do. Give. Share love. God said He'd never leave us. No mistake was there. And, and, and only the woman in it, it didn't happen to much. It's kind of like the widow's mite. Jesus tells the disciples, watch this. Your time 
the cause for a long time. Guess what? Ain't nothing that went wrong with them. They ain't going to get money. And I know people still using the same washing machine. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> 15 years later. Amen. He said, I'll just Special prayer, God, Sister Darnell, God, 